U turn. <laughs> Trying a different dragon. Where is the other, where is the thunder dragon? First stratum. Thank you. 
25,000 HP Weak to fire It has an insta-kill move potentially, I think it, That's what that means See if the resistance rings can help and stuff. Or amulets.
This is a normal difficulty as well, so... Oh no. Well, it's a good thing she's not attacking.
Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. I think I'd rather replace some video with something else, honestly. As for who, I don't know. I don't know what a Fatal Magatama is, but I do have a Death Magatama I can buy instead. And welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Beacons. Since we defeated the winner a few episodes ago, but we have not yet had the opportunity to discuss what this strange block is and why it's so important that you need to fight one of the tougher bosses in the game in order to obtain it. In order to activate the beacon, we're going to grab some resource blocks. Now, we're going to do this with iron blocks here, but you can also do this with gold blocks, emerald blocks, diamond blocks, all blocks of netherite, which are actually so difficult to acquire at this point that I have not gotten any yet in my storage system yet. Given that we are currently farming iron and have been for a while, however, iron blocks are going to be probably the cheapest to come by. And of course, you can dig up iron from huge iron veins in your world, and you should be able to come away with enough blocks to light up one of these beacons. So we're going to start by placing a 3x3 three three of iron blocks here in the center of this grassy open area outside of our base, and you will now see that we get an advancement for activating the beacon for the first time. And if we right click on the interface here, you'll notice the beacon highlights a set of powers that we have for each tier that we build of the pyramid supporting the beacon block. In this case, we have only built one tier here with a 3x3 three three of blocks, just 9 iron blocks here will get us either a boost of speed or a boost to haste, which is actually a mining speed increase. We need to activate the beacon in order to take advantage of this effect, however, so we need to feed it an iron ingot, a gold ingot, a diamond, an emerald, or a netherite ingot. Actually, that final option is going to be a massive flex and will completely waste a netherite ingot, considering that you can very easily 
activate a beacon with renewable resources like emeralds and iron. In fact, there's ways you can farm gold, which we'll be looking into later in the series. So actually, in this case, we have this many iron ingots. We're going to use iron ingots for that, and we're going to give ourselves the speed buff. You'll also notice that a secondary power pops up here, depending on which of the primary powers you pick on the left-hand side, but that's something we'll be able to get into once we've built up the beacon a little more. But now we're going to click the green tick mark here, and as you can see, we now get a speed buff. I'm actually moving a little faster. I can even switch sneak a little faster now. And this speed buff is permanent while you are within the beacon radius. In fact, if you look at your inventory, you'll notice it gives you 10 seconds of speed. So that 10 seconds would last even if you ran away from the beacon's radius, but it refreshes every few seconds that you stand within the radius of the beacon. Now I'm talking about the radius of a beacon, but the effect actually applies in a square shape centered on the beacon block itself and extending vertically to the build height. So if you think about it as a radius that extends from the beam of the beacon itself and is basically a square column rising into the sky, that's more or less what we're dealing with here. And at the first level right here, the effect is only going to last for about 20 blocks. If I get more than 20 blocks away from this beacon, you should see that speed buff start to decrease until it goes away entirely. Where is 20 blocks? Probably from about here. Yep, there we go. As you can see, the speed increase is now ticking down. I haven't even made it most of the way to my storage room here. And there we go, the speed buff has worn off. Once we step back into the square of the beacon, in fact, though, the speed buff should return, and we can effectively get the speed buff this way whenever we want it, just by stepping into the radius of the beacon, and then we can run away as far as we can possibly get with our additional speed buff before the whole thing wears off. Now, speed is, of course, an effect it's possible to get by other means. You can take motions of swiftness in order to gain a temporary speed buff for a much longer duration. And honestly, if you want a speed boost, a beacon isn't the most logical thing to get it from, since you probably want to be running in a straight line and you're running away from the radius of the beacon's effect. So, naturally, on these first two choices, haste seems like the more appealing one. Haste will increase your mining speed beyond what is possible even with efficiency tools. And that stacks with efficiency, meaning that some blocks which you are unable to instantly mine in the same way that you can leaves or netherrack, for example, become instantly mineable. But that depends on the block itself, and we'll deal with that in a second. For now though, we're actually going to remove the beacon from here and activate level two by building up a 5x5 beacon base with a 3x3 on top of it. We're simply going to expand this beacon base of iron blocks every time until we end up with the full pyramid and we can discuss all the beacons next. Now with the tier 2 beacon, and it does need to be solid all the way through, you can't skip on the blocks underneath it, the game will know. With a 5x5 topped with a 3x3 of iron blocks, we activate the second tier of the beacon's primary powers, unlocking resistance and resistance 2 as a secondary power, alongside jump boost and jump boost 2 appearing in the secondary powers as well. So those two are pretty self-explanatory, really. Resistance, as the shield icon would indicate, gives you additional defense against anything that might damage you. It's kind of like having an extra protection enchantment that, once again, stacks with the protection that's already on your arm. And the thing about resistance is that the beacon is one of only three places you can get hold of the resistance effect, and it is one of only two that have no downsides. The third is a potion that you can brew called the Potion of the Turtle Master. Now, we haven't acquired any turtle shell helmets yet, but once you've bred turtles and acquired a skew items from them and crafted those into a helmet, you can actually use the helmet as a potion brewing ingredient to brew a potion of the Turtle Master, which gives you a high level of resistance but also a high level of the slowness effect, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. Aside from that, and the beacons, the only place you can get resistance from is by eating an enchanted golden apple, one of the rare items that you cannot craft, you can only find them in loot chests. Now we brought about six or seven of those back from a recent ancient city raid, so we have a lot of them right now, but they are naturally a finite resource, so getting resistance from a beacon seems like an attractive prospect, and we can level it up to a second level of the effect, with resistance to over here. Jump boost is also available as a potion effect. You can get that by brewing a potion using a rabbit, which again, I don't think we've done yet in the series, but there are rabbits around the meadow biome here, so we could go and get those if we choose. And like other potion effects, jump boost has a three minute or an eight minute potion duration, or you can upgrade it to jump boost 
2 for a shorter push duration with a more intense effect. The jump boost when activated allows you to jump an additional half block per tier of jump boost. So in this case, this would be enough to allow us to jump over fences, let's say. So in this case, I could jump over the sniffer paddock fence into the enclosed area without a big problem, without needing to have a carpet or a trap door over there and a skyle. But I can't jump up a full height of two blocks. I can only do that if I had a jump boost to it. Once again, we're going to deactivate the beacon and build up a third tier. So this requires a 7x7 base, a 5x5 on top of that, and a 3x3 crowning the entire thing with the beacon placed in the center. I should also add that each time we increase the number of tiers of this beacon, each time a level is added, that also increases the range of the beacon's effect. So in this case, we can still choose from any of the now five primary powers here, and we're going to pick strength. For example, strength is much the same as the potion effect, so you won't find yourself using this on beacons all that often, unless you want to place a beacon by a mob farm where you are swinging to deal damage and take out the mobs. But the beacon's effective range extends by 10 blocks for each tier of the beacon you add, so you can still have one of the base level effects like speed or haste, but they will apply in a 40 block radius now instead of a 20 block radius. And I can now stand here inside of the front door of my storage system and that strength effect is refreshing. It also ends up lasting for a little bit longer with each additional tier of the beacon. So now it's refreshing to 14 seconds of that strength effect. I think technically it's 15 seconds of the effect because it also counts the timer ticking down from 1 to 0 before the effect wears off. So overall it's 15 seconds and it just immediately ticks down to 14. But either way, we now have access to all of the primary powers of the beacon having built it up to tier 3. Now we can get any of these within a 40 block square column centered on the beacon. It's also worth noting that that range of the beacon's effect also applies below the beacon for the same number of blocks. So, for example, if you were to get 40 blocks below this beacon right now, we would run out of the strength effect. But if you were, you know, up to 38 blocks or so below the beacon block itself, then you'd be able to still maintain the strength effect. It would wear off if you any deeper. So this means to take maximum advantage of the full height of a beacon beam, you should basically place it as low as possible in the world and allow the beacon beam to travel up. Unfortunately though, the beacon does need access to the open sky in order for the beacon beam to become active and if we place a solid block over the top of it, it blocks the beacon beam and now that effect is going to go away. You'll hear the noise disappear and the effect will eventually wear off. However, the beacon still maintains the effect it had before, so if you remove that block, the beacon's beam will reactivate, and the effect that you've chosen previously will return. You can also put transparent blocks over the top of the beacon beam, which bizarrely an ender chest also counts as, because it's not a full block, it would allow light through and would therefore allow the beacon to be through as well. Now with blocks of coloured glass, it is even possible to change the colour of the beacon beam. I'm going to grab a couple here for example. If we place a blue glass block over the beacon's beam here, it changes the beacon's colour to that deep blue. You can also do this at different heights of the beam itself, so if we place the lime and stained glass in here, it will make the beacon's beam green, but only above the point where the glass block interacts with the beam itself. And if we wanted to, we could put a piece of stained glass in there, and that would actually change the beacon's beam before it reaches the green stained glass and a combination of the two colours rises out of the green block, which is kind of an awful browny orange colour because of the way those colours combine. It's also worth noting for the scientists out there that this is the primary colours of pigments rather than the primary colours of light, so you cannot combine red, green and blue to make white. If anything, it makes this odd kind of purplish black colour, which is not the most desirable colour, I will admit. But one fun thing that's worth noting here is that while the hitbox of the glass remains in place, I can't walk through this bit. There is a glass pane in the centre of there. The glass pane's model does end up concealing itself neatly within the beam of the beacon, so it's kind of cool to be able to hide that inside there and not have a really obvious glass block on top of the beacon, changing the beam's colour. Further up there, it does seem like the beam's colour actually ends after a certain point, so I'm going to fly up to that point and see if that's just a rendering thing, which it looks like it is at this point, because I'm above the build height and I'm not getting any closer to that point. Wow! Uh, but we're pretty high up here actually, so while it might look like the beacon's beam is changing colour above a certain point, that's just the distance of the kind of thing that gives the distance terrain in the game a little bit more haze and 
certain mods, like Ultrafine or Sodium's advanced settings or something, you might be able to simply turn that effect off and see a blue beam rising infinitely into the sky. Now let's set up a tier 4 beacon, let's go all the way and see what additional effects that grants us. The fourth tier of beacon requires a 9x9 base of 81 blocks, with 49 blocks in a 7x7 above that, 25 blocks in a 5x5, and finally 9 blocks in a 3x3 at the top, and then the beacon can be placed in the middle and that will get you another advancement for fully powering a beacon. So bring up the beacon and beaconator can be acquired at the same time if you just build a tier 4 beacon to begin with. But as we can see here, we have now unlocked both primary and secondary powers from the beacon. And this is where the beacon's full strength comes into effect. The effective range of a beacon yeah, is now I 50 really blocks extending across every side this. in a square.